thank you for joining us for another episode of That Solo Life, the podcast about public relations and marketing pros who work as independent businesses. I am Michelle Kane. My company is Voice Matters, and I am, as always, honored to be here with the head honcho of Solo PR Pro, Karen Swim. How are you doing today, Karen? I am doing great, Michelle. How are you? Good, good. A few oh, we're we're closing in on um, by the time this airs, it'll be will be double digits into the new year, and so far I am faring well. I'm feeling like I am ahead of the giant rolling ball like Indiana Jones and not, you know, getting run over by it. So to me, that's a good thing. That is a fantastic thing. You know, (laughs) it's funny because I've heard people complaining this week and groaning and I am honestly having a fantastic year. I'm so excited and I, I tweaked, you know, my work schedule a little bit and really tightened up my routine and, and I'm just, I'm, It's working for me, even when there are setbacks like today, where I had to deal with a lot of technology gremlins, as you know. Um, Right. But, you know, when you have a plan and you know that you are staying on task, you you just sort of look at it and go, okay, that happened. And and you just, it doesn't stop your momentum. Right. And that brings us to our topic today, the appropriate topic for the start of a new year, goals and goal setting. Um, and I think even jumping right into what you said, when you have a plan, you can work the plan and then you can, it allows you to remain calmer and more focused and more purposeful. And that could just be as simple as prioritizing the must do's of the day or, you know, drilling down and, and really working on, um, a variety of, of goal setting, whether professional, personal or both. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that I find that is super effective and, and, you know, we know that there's all sorts of goal setting apps, resources, databases, books. I mean, this gets covered to death. And the reason that it gets covered to death is because one method doesn't work for every person. So sometimes... Right you really do have to experiment and find the thing that resonates with who you are, how you work and and how your mind works and kind of what motivates you to stay on track. And that could be a mixture of methods, but one overarching thing that really helps me to stay focused is to have a vision about different um, categories of my life. So having a very clear articulated vision for my business, um, for my physical health, for my mental health, and then having goals that support that vision that are documented for me, keep me on track because then I know that, Hey, these are the things that I want to achieve. If I want to make X amount of dollars and that means, you know, I have to back that up and say, okay, what does that mean? month to month? What does that mean for my days? You know, how many clients do I need to serve? What do I need to do to get there? And then things that are outside of that vision just don't fit into the schedule. So I don't make time for the things that are not hugely important. And that allows me to be more productive. And so, yeah, it's not just about setting goals, because I think sometimes we just write some stuff on a piece of paper. Maybe you don't even write it on a piece of paper, but I am a huge fan of writing it down mm-hmm. with pen and ink or, you know, however. It, to me, that it, it almost creates like a legal contract with yourself. Right. It helps you internalize for sure. For sure. I mean, I love the digital stuff too, but there's something about writing it down, looking at it, you know, having having it confront you every day. I know people that, you know, print out their goals or they write them, they have like a a whiteboard um, in their office and maybe even in their home, like in the hallway so that they have to pass it every day and look at it, you know, whatever kind of, you know, however you get motivated the best, maybe, you know, I'm super visual. So I like visual reminders, but maybe you're like a more auditory person. So maybe it's, you know, um, leaving yourself messages or, you know, recording something that you can listen to every day, you'll, you you know, individualize it to your personality. 
Yeah, no, exactly. And and I think too, there's something to be said for handwriting it because it's it's your handwriting. It's not just typeface, which could be from anyone, you know. Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely something to be said for that. And, you know, for me too, it's, you know, I always have the few overarching goals in the back of my mind, but there is something to merging that with your day to day, because you know it's, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm going to assume you can relate to this in the same way. If I see the same phrase or the same word a few times within a few days, then I know, and that resonates with something that's already been on my mind, then I know, mm -hmm, okay, right, I need to pursue that. And and one of the things I've been seeing around is, you know, it's the small decisions you make every day that yeah. turn into your patterns and, and, and just really how you spend your day. So it's important to have, yes, I want to gain two clients this year, or I want to pursue learning X. Well, Break that down. What are the actions you need to take take every day? Is it, you know, getting up or getting to your desk an hour earlier every day to work on toward that goal? Um, is it, you know, reaching out to different people in different ways? What do you need to do? And I think just breaking that down into those steps and, like you say, work the plan. And yeah. That will, it's really, it's that simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And I know I, sometimes my thought process, my head can just get so full and think, oh, it's all too much. There's no way. And you yeah. just have to try and find that magic moment of clarity and time. You know, when you have, you have the right energy. Because if you, if you're not, if you don't have good energy, when you go into setting your goals, you know, if you're tired or if it's the end of the day, you're just it's not going to flow as well as if you make it a priority first thing in the and morning. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are one of those people, which a lot of creative people are, that could be a victim of distraction, right. the more clear you are about what you're trying to accomplish, it, it will keep you on track. And you sort yeah. of just ignore everything else. I mean, yeah. especially for solos and if you're working in a home environment, you know, there's loads of distractions or even in an office, you know, even in an office environment. So totally. I, I think, you know, one thing is to set goals that are meaningful, you know, don't set goals because right. it seems like it's the right thing to do, right. you know, like, well, I'm going to set this goal because that, that sounds like the right thing that I should be aiming for. It has to be personally meaningful to you. And then it yeah. has to be specific because if it's vague, you know, saying I want to lose weight is so vague. Right. What does that even mean? How much weight do you want to lose? And when do you want to lose it by? And is the amount of weight realistic for that time frame? So in that, you know, and if it's it's a goal that's going to take two years, that's okay. But you still need to break that down into smaller steps so that you can work on those steps to get there. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I mean, I, you know, so many of our sellers are like, well, I, you know, I need to, I need to make more money or I need to grow my business. What is, to what? Yeah. What does that look what like for you? Yeah. What does yeah. that mean to you? Not what do you think people want you to do, but what is right for you? Right. Right. And, you know, I think it helps to think of goals as uh, vehicles, right? It's not, and not yeah. to say that you can't set a goal for yourself just for the simple self-satisfaction, which is a vehicle in and of itself. But, you know, where, where is this goal going to take me? Yeah. Because that's yeah. the expectation I would set of a goal, not just, you know, okay, I want to learn French. Why? Because it'll be fun. Okay, well, that's that's a fair goal. That's a great goal. But it's, you know, if if we're here, if you're here listening to this podcast, you're probably trying to get, you know, business tips and things like that. So, you know, what things to propel your, your work forward. So I, I like to couch it in that way, even just for myself of, you know, this isn't just because it's good to have goals. It's, well, where is it going to take me? What, what am I going to, how am I going to grow? What am I going to get at the end of this goal? Hopefully. Um, yeah. So for those yeah. who might be reluctant to start. <laughs> Which I mean, you know, for me, that's, about what I feel I'm purposed to do. 
So if it's part of my purpose, I'm excited about it because I know that then there's that alignment, right? It has to be aligned with your values, you know, what's important to you, what your priorities are. And I think for me too, what helps is having goals in every area of my life because Mm. I am a whole person. And if you only have work goals and you don't have, you know, family goals and physical goals and mental health goals, then you're missing. And sometimes you can allow that one thing where the goals are to overtake everything else. And it throws things out of balance. And it's an easy way, quite frankly, to, to neglect something. So if it's all about work, 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 driving, hustle, grind, very true of your life. And if you're neglecting those things, they can actually hinder what you're trying to do in the professional side of your life and so um you know there are lots of different areas to your life so have goals in each of those areas and then you can take a step back and look at the bigger picture and so you know sometimes you know a personal goal can drive how you do professionally so right for example maybe your goal is to you know be able to have you know date night with your husband, you know, once a week. And that means that you have to actually get out of the office um, (laughs) by a certain time. So that's going to, you know, that personal goal is going to bleed over into your professional life where it's going to cause you to be more efficient so that you can make sure that you have that time free. Or maybe, you know, for me, you know, this year, I wanted to make, to be more intentional about spending time with my nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. God, there's a lot of them. So I can't (laughs) take them off all the time. I wanted that to not just, you know, be when it happens, but to be intentional. So having that as a goal makes me really think about my days differently, like, and my weeks differently as I'm planning, because I really want to spend time with them. Right. No, it's so true. Because I I always, I mean, my friends know this, I am terrible at initiating the plan of, hey, let's get together, unless it's an event or something. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's been top of mind as well. I'm like, you know, I really could get better about that, <laughs> you know, schedule those <laughs> lunch dates or, you know, those, those fun times. And you're right. It does pair up with how you spend your professional time, even your after hours, professional commitments, you know, how that all pairs together. It's funny, even as you were talking, I was visualizing a Venn diagram of goals. Wouldn't it be great? Here's yeah. a great challenge, you know, do your personal circle, your professional circle and, yeah, I don't know, just for fun circle and see how they interconnect. Because who knows, if you learn French I for fun, that. maybe you'll get a client in France one day and you'll realize, thank God I learned French for fun. Hmm. I or maybe that's French. the goal. Maybe the yeah. goal is to learn French because I want to have a client in France or you just right. want to go, um, yeah. which, you know, I highly recommend. I love France. <laughs> oh, la, la. <laughs> I love France. Yes, I do. Um, uh-huh. But I agree, you know, have a, have a reason that you're doing it. And if it's, you know, to enrich yourself, maybe you want to learn lots of languages and you pick one each year that you're going to learn. That's right. fantastic. Or maybe you want to learn to play an instrument or you yeah. want to take dance lessons. Um, I saw the most fantastic thing on Twitter. There's a woman by the name of Jamie. I think her last name is Santos. Um, and I think it's okay for me to share that because it was publicly on Twitter I saw and, that, I think. Oh, she yeah. tweeted how at 37 years old, she she was able to accomplish the, this gymnastics move. I, I It was like a <laughs> double back over. I don't know. <laughs> and you know what? I celebrated with Jamie like it was me because I that's so amazing that she set this goal to do this thing. I don't care what her reasons were. It was her goal. It was meaningful to her and she accomplished it, you know, and in her tweet, she's like, it's not perfect, but I did it. And it just, (laughs) it, my, it just made my day. It made my day. And I've been sharing it all over the place because it's so cool when that happens. And, and so, yeah, yeah, you know, have goals that make you excited in that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that are so meaningful to you and, and be able, and, you know, have a little reward for yourself. I like rewards. I have some rewards, rewards are good. Lined up for myself, you know, each month as I hit different goals. Um, 
reward yourself, treat yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do you find, you know, sometimes with some goals, it's probably good to, you know, get an accountability partner. It doesn't mean you're working on the same goals. It's just to check in with each other and say, hey, so how's that working for you? <laughs> for like, oh. sure. One of the best pieces of advice that I heard actually this year from a woman by the name of Dr. Cindy Trim is to have accountability um, partners for the the parts of your vision where you're weak. So, mm, you know, if you struggle yeah. with getting enough sleep, you know, have an accountability partner that's going to, and you're, you're saying, I stay up too late, I don't get enough sleep. And so mm. now you're committing to, I'm going to be in bed by 11 p.m. So have your ability, your accountability partner text you and say, did you go to bed at 11? If it's I have that. a certain hour, yeah. Yes, it's, my dog. He parks at me at 1045 every night. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> 15 more minutes, Finn. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, for sure. You know, I have accountability partners for areas that, you know, I have weaknesses in and they hold my feet to the fire. Did you do that? So it does, it helps. It really helps to push you in and it doesn't feel intrusive and it doesn't feel like, annoying because it's a thing that I want to do. I want to do it. And so I'm so happy to have people in my life that remind me like, did you do that? Yes. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I think especially as solo business owners, we're so accustomed to yeah. motivating ourselves and fueling ourselves. And, you know, it's, it's neither a weakness to ask for that kind of help and accountability, you know, nor is it you know, a bad thing at all. I think it's, you know, there's strength in relying on each other for, for that kind of help. Um, I and, mean, you know, here's the one thing that I've learned is nothing great happens on your own. Um, oh, that's the so true. Things, I mean, yes, the great things that you do, it's never by yourself. And if, and if, if you think that you can accomplish all of these great things on your own, then your vision is probably not big enough. You need other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you just do. And so I agree. I don't know where people get this whole thing. And, and I always tell people working solo doesn't mean you're alone. It's why I love solo PR pro because you, right. you have a community of support and not only support, but smarts and insight and people yeah. to brainstorm with and people for sanity checks. You need all <laughs> yes. of that. You cannot do this all by yourself. And so it, it's not a weakness to ask for help. It's a strength. It's a strength to build up a network of people and, and have, you know, an accountability partner or two that you guys can support one another as you are striving to do whatever it is that's important to you. Right. <clears throat> and. Yeah, I mean, I know we, we usually talk about the group, the Solo PR Pro group, each um, episode. And sorry, my throat's a little hello. Um, anyway, and um, yeah, just just what a great water cooler staff meeting space that is. Um, you yeah. know, to run things by each other and things like that. And if you don't, you know, if you don't belong, which you should, um, you know, make sure you get a few people around you, some peers you know, professionals yeah. you can trust. And I realize, depending, you know, what industry you're in, that could be, you, you know, you'd have to be very particular. You know, you can't always run everything by everyone. We, we definitely understand that. But, um, you know, get some people in your circle that, that you trust their professional opinion. And, um, you know, just make sure that they're, you know, that you're there for each other and that you can bounce ideas off each other or do gut checks. Gut checks are always, oof. Always need some gut checks sometimes, just even about situations Absolutely. that happen as you work, you know, um, whether you're working in Absolutely. an office or not, you know, sometimes things just transpire and you have to say, you know, am I, am I off track here in my thinking or, or no, you know, so, so that's important too. Um, and I think too, one of, one of the main things, you know, we're all excited about January, we're oh, you know, if you're a pen and paper person, you're opening your new planner or, you know, you're starting a fresh page in your digital notebook or something. Um, 
you know, I think it's, if we need to help you with this podcast to stay on track, you know, through February, March, into June and July, and to just see how you're doing. And, you know, we'd love to hear what your goals are too. That would be a fun thing to leave in our comment section. Um, yeah. Just to find out what, what, what everybody's into and, and, you know, learn how we can support each other because we'd love to speak to some of the items that you might be um, striving for this year. We, yes. And we want to be your Miss Nigeria. We want to celebrate <laughs> your successes. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> can you guys tell that I spend a lot of time on Twitter? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness you're you're hanging on the fun spot of twitter <laughs> i'm hanging on a fun spot i'm ignoring all of the ugly nasty all the terrible stuff yeah <laughs> i'm over here reading about how lizzo's quitting and um megan and harry are you know stepping back doing their own thing <laughs> go megan and harry <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The day, we're recording this on the day that, oh my goodness, Megan and Harry are forging their own path. <laughs> I love that. There's a lesson in that. We might address yeah. that at some point. We might use them as an example, but there is a big lesson in that. So, yes. Yeah, we might yes. put that on the agenda. And Absolutely. speaking of goals, Michelle and I have a goal for our podcast, That Solo Life. And our goal is to continue to bring you fantastic content, to have a great time doing this, but to get more of you listening. Yes. So in addition to subscribing, and please, if you like the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes because it means a big, big deal for the algorithm. Um, and, the, you know, download the podcast. You can listen to it on wherever you listen to your podcast. And there's so right. many options, but share it please share it. We'd love if you tell somebody else about us too, because we want to grow our audience and yes. we want to continue to bring you great things. And we want to continue to grow and develop and have a place in your listening library. Yes, absolutely. That's, you know, we're, we have fun doing this, but it, it's, it certainly is purposeful. We want to help you as you work in your business, as you grow your business, you know, to, to add to the, the voices in your head that's just you talking to yourself having a staff meeting. <laughs> so that is our goal to just really help you be the best professional you can be. So that's a pretty good goal, I'd say. That's a yeah. really good goal. Yeah. So we thank you for listening, spending time with us yet again. Hopefully, if we're with you at the gym or on your commute, we hope that it is time well spent. And until next time, thanks for listening to That Solo Life. Thanks, everyone.